Hello everyone, welcome to the Computer Networks Practice Series. So in this particular session, we will study about data and signals. So data can be of two types, analog and digital. It can be either analog or it can be digital. The example like analog data, it refers to information which is continuous in nature. So human voice is an example of analog data. Then we have digital data. So digital data, it has discrete number of states. Okay, so we can say analog data it has infinite states and digital data it has uh, discrete states. So example of da digital data is the data stored in computer. Then we have signals similar we have the signals of two types. The signals can be analog they can be digital. So this is the example of the analog signal as we can say as we can see they have infinite number of states. Then we have the digital signal it has finite states as the given example. Now the signals they can be either periodic or they can be aperiodic. Periodic means those signals which repeats itself after a certain amount of time. And aperiodic signal they don't repeat it's a, they, they, they are not repeated. So like for example here we have analog signal, digital signal, periodic and aperiodic. So this is an example a sign a simple sine wave is an example of a periodic analog signal and the example of a periodic digital signal is a simple square wave. Then as we can see in this uh, the a periodic signal the analog a periodic in this case uh, this signal is not repeated. Similarly for this digital signal this is not repeated. So we cannot reconstruct it again uh, we don't know what the next signal would be. Then uh, how do we observe a periodic analog signal it can be of course two types we have a simple analog signal and a composite analog signal. So this is an example of a simple analog signal that is a simple sine wave. Then this is an example of a composite analog signal. This signal is actually constructed by uh, combining many sine waves component. Okay. Now there are some parameters which are related to the periodic analog signals. So a sine wave can be represented by three parameters. The first is the peak amplitude, second is frequency, third is the phase. So we'll study all these things with uh, this particular simple example. So let us see the first one that is the peak amplitude. So peak amplitude is also called the maximum intensity of the signal and it is represented generally in terms of volts. So this is one example of a sine wave. So here this is another wave and here we have the third wave. So these are the three different waves. As we can see in the first example, uh, the third, the pink wave, this arrow, it shows the peak amplitude, the maximum amplitude, the maximum height of the signal. This is the maximum height, that is the peak amplitude of the second one and this is the peak amplitude of the third signal. So of course the red is having the maximum or the peak amplitude of this is the maximum. Next parameter is the frequency. Now frequency is also called as the number of cycles per second. It is measured in terms of hertz. So suppose if we have this uh, diagram, in this case suppose if we have a time period of one second. So we have two waves. The first wave as we can see the number of cycles are six. Okay. So six and the second case we have three cycles. So if we assume that this time is of one second, then in the first case the frequency is six hertz because we are having six complete waves in one second. In the second case the frequency is three hertz because we are having three cycles or three full waves in one second. Next comes the phase. Phase refers to the position of a point in time on the waveform cycle. It is measured in terms of degrees or radians. So let us see how what we mean by phase so this is a signal okay so in this case as we can see it starts from the origin of this particular uh, graph so phase is zero the second one it starts after a time period of 90 degrees so if one complete wave it represents 360 degree so this is one fourth of the wave it starts at the one fourth so it is the nine it starts after 90 degree so in this case the phase is actually 90 degree and the third wave it starts with respect to the blue wave the first wave it starts after 180 degree 
okay so the phase is 180 degree so this is how we represent the phases different phases of the waves then ap apart from this we also have uh, something called as the wavelength so wavelength is called the distance covered by one wave it is measured in meters so if we have this particular wave so this is one single wave a crest and a trough it makes a single wave and this distance is called the wavelength and it is denoted generally by lambda so this is the uh, actually now here there is a mistake actually, this should not be time this should be actually in meters okay so if you measure this in meters it becomes the wavelength now we have some relations between various parameters like frequency and time period so time period is the time required to complete one oscillation so this is the relation so f and t they are inversely proportional to each other so f equal to 1 upon time period then the relation between frequency and wavelength so f equal to c upon lambda frequency is equal to c c is the velocity of the wave and lambda is of course the wavelength so we must remember this formula when we need the conversions now when we are drawing the any of the signal there are two ways in which we can draw the diagrams the first is using the time domain the other is the frequency domain so let us see how we can have the time domain plot of a signal so in this particular domain we have a uh, time on the x axis and amplitude on the y axis so this is one of the signal as we can see so here if the amplitude is 5 volt okay and we can see if this time period is of 1 second so then this is 3 hertz so this single wave what we have drawn this diagram this this particular diagram it represents a signal which is of 5 volt and 3 hertz so if we assume this time is of 1 second so there are three waves so frequency is 3 hertz and the height the peak amplitude of 5 volt now how do we draw the frequency domain plot so in this case we have on the x axis we have the frequency on the y axis we have the amplitude so this is we just draw a single line on number 3 so this particular that represents actually sorry so this represents a frequency of 3 hertz and because the height is 5 volt so it represents the same thing which was represented by the previous diagram now let us see how we can have the time domain plot of a composite signal as uh, in the definition we saw that composite signal consists of multiple sine waves so here we have suppose there is a time of 1 second this is the first wave so there are six uh, cycles so it will make up a frequency of 6 hertz and if this amplitude is of 7 volt so in this the red signal it is of 7 volt and 6 hertz frequency this is the second uh, signal okay so the vertical height is of 5 volt and there are only two waves so it represents voltage 5 volt and frequency of 2 hertz this is the third signal so the there are three waves so frequency is 3 hertz and this height is of 3 volt so we have 3 volt and 3 hertz frequency so this diagram if we draw on uh, using frequency domain let us see what we will we will get so let us see so here this is the first signal okay because the frequency of 6 so on the x axis we have the frequency so the height is of 7 volt so this particular signal it is of 7 volt and 6 hertz frequency the second one is having 3 hertz and the height is 3 volt so this is 3 volt and 3 hertz the third signal is of 5 volt and 2 hertz so as we can see if we compare the previous diagram with this one this one is much much easier we just need to draw a single line rather than drawing large number of waves so frequency domain diagrams are much simpler as compared to time domain diagrams now let us come to digital signals so digital signals can have various levels so this let us see a digital signal with two levels so we only define two levels to define uh, the various uh, signals so here suppose the data is 101101 so how do we represent the signal for this particular data so 101101 it is the data so let us see how we represent it by using a two level signal so this is 101101 so in this diagram what we see is a uh, a high voltage which means 1 and zero voltage means 0 so these are only there are only two levels level 0 level 1 and level 2 level 1 represents 0 level 2 represents 1 so in this case uh, suppose if this time period is of 1 second so 6 bits are transferred in 1 second 
so the speed is so the bit rate actually is six bits per second so bit rate is six bits so we are transferring six bits in one second now let us see digital signals with four levels so there will be four levels other than two so here we have uh, signals uh, so the, the data two bit data okay so every level will transfer two bits at a time so let us see how we have four levels so here we can see various levels are there okay so here you can see there are four levels okay so level one it represents zero zero level two it represents zero one level three it represents one zero and level four one one so wherever we get the data one zero we have level three as we can see there are one zero is coming three times so level three is coming three times then zero zero is level one and so on okay so here we have four levels and each level is carrying two bits so if this time is suppose of one second then bit rate becomes 12 bits so total one zero 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 one zero one zero zero if you count the number of bits they are 12 and if this time is suppose of six seconds so here 12 bits are transmitted in one second in the previous case we had only two levels so bit rate was less here bit rate is large so we have more bit rate so more number of bits should be transferred in one second so we have 12 bits are transferred because the number of levels are large so there are 12 bits in one second are transferred now how to transmit digital signals so when we want to trans transmit digital signals so because a digital signal is a composite analog signal and it is a large it has infinite bandwidth so a digital signal is a not a simple signal it is a composite it consists of various uh, sine waves large number of sine waves so it requires an infinite bandwidth okay so to transmit the digital signal we can use two different approaches the first one is the baseband transmission the second is the broadband transmission which is also called as using modulation now let us see what is the meaning of baseband transmission so <coughs> in baseband transmission what we do is we send the digital signal through the channel without making any changes we transmit the digital signal in the original format so suppose we have host a and we have host b and this is the channel now mind it this channel is having a finite bandwidth so let us see what happens so host a transmits the data to the channel and it reaches host b so this is actually how the digital signal is transmitted but it is not as what we see there are some problems which are encountered in baseband transmission now baseband channel which we saw in the previous case which was between the two hosts it has limited bandwidth and digital signal it requires infinite bandwidth so what happens so here we can see this orange color this is actually th this is the bandwidth of the digital signal okay the input signal the digital it requires infinite bandwidth and you can see below this is the uh, we can say the wave input signal and this is the bandwidth required this is the is the bandwidth now this is the input channel the black one and this is the bandwidth of the channel so the, it has a finite bandwidth from f1 to f2 so this signal has to be transmitted through this particular channel okay so because the channel is having finite bandwidth and we are we are sending infinite bandwidth signal through the channel what happens is that we get distorted output so it only this channel only transmits finite bandwidth of the infinite channel so therefore we don't get uh, the entire signal so we get this is what output signal is so this is the input and this is the output so we get a distorted output so this is the problem which occurs in the baseband transmission now let us see what happens in case of broadband transmission so this is the input signal this input signal is converted to analog because this original signal is digital signal so we have a d to a converter so dac means digital to analog converter and because of this we this signal original signal is converted to analog signal now as we know analog is having a finite bandwidth this signal is transmitted through the input channel and this is easily passed because this input channel it supports the entire bandwidth and it is transmitted properly and at the receiving end because we need to convert back to analog back to digital so we have there is an a to d converter so this analog to digital converter it converts the analog signal to digital signal back as we can see the input signal at the receiving end uh, is easily recovered in the original format so this is uh, how we have the broadband transmission 
Now we have something called as transmission impairment. So what is the meaning of transmission impairment? So signal impairment occurs as signal pass through imperfect transmission media. So when we are passing the signal through the transmission media, this media they are not perfect. And because of the imperfection, the signal gets distorted. Okay, the, the signal is not in the original format as it, it was sent. So we, we send something, we are receiving something else. That is called as signal impairment. Now there are three causes of impairment. The first is attenuation, second is distortion, third is noise. Now let us see one by one. The first is the attenuation. So attenuation means loss of energy. Okay. Now here we have an example like suppose we have point 0.1, point 0.2 and point 0.3. So when signal travels from point 0.1 to point 0.2, it loses energy. Okay, because when the signal passes either through air or either through the wire, it loses energy. Okay, so see this is the original signal. When it passes through the wire, its amplitude becomes extremely less. So we want to pass this signal to point 3. So this signals need to be amplified. So this amplifier, it amplifies the signal. Okay, so we need amplifiers or we can say regenerators so that the it, it can make up the loss of energy. So attenuation means loss of energy. So because of this signal gets becomes weak. Okay. And if the signal is not amplified, the signal may not be received at the receiving end. So amplifier, it actually overcomes the attenuation part. Next comes the distortion. Distortion means the, the shape and the form of the signal changes. Okay. So this because of distortion, the shape of the signal would change. So this is a com let us exa see example. This is a composite signal. Now this composite signal it consists of these three waves. These are the three waves. So if we actually uh, divide this, okay, or uh, when we make up this signal, we require these three sine waves, okay. So when we send this particular signal, these three waves waves need to be sent so that it it is easily recovered at the receiving end. So these signals are passed to the receiver. So at the receiving end, what happens? We get this. Okay, so as we can see the phase of the signal has ch changed phase. Okay, as we can see. So because of this, when the receiver reconstructs the signal, the receiver actually gets a distorted signal. Now why this occurred as we can see in the first case, the phase is same. In the second case, the signal was sent with zero phase, but it was received with 180 phase shift. As you can see, there is a phase shift in the third in the third case also we can say there is a change in the phase so because of the change in phase the signal gets distorted okay so this was sent and we, we, we receive this next is the noise now what is the meaning of noise noise is unwanted electromagnetic interference so okay so uh, this noise can corrupt the signal now there are some types of noise the first is the thermal noise the second is the induced we have crosstalk, we have impulse. These are the various types of noise which corrupt the signal. Now, what is the meaning of thermal noise? Thermal noise means what? When electric current passes through the wire, uh, the electrons, they they generate some uh, cur while flowing. They also generate their own signals. So that signal may also mix up with our signal and it can actually uh, generate unwanted uh, part. Then we have induced signal. Induced signal, one of the example is like lightning. Or suppose our our wire is going through some uh, area where there is heavy industry and it, it and, and that heavy industry produces some electromagnetic signals and they are entering our wire okay then there is a example of a crosstalk okay or we impulse or impulse is that that uh, what my example uh, which I gave that lightning is the example of impulse and induced means that the example which I gave was uh, that when our wire is going through some uh, uh, area which is uh, prone to large electromagnetic interference so this of course they causes noise they mix up with our original signal and they uh, produce some unwanted effects so here is we see an example so we have that sender side this is the signal which was sent by the sender and at this point at the middle noise was mixed with this transmission signal and the what was received this was what was received so as we can see what is transmitted is not the received because this noise has corrupted the original signal. Now we have something called a signal to noise ratio which actually measures the quality of the input uh, or the output also. So SNR is the ratio of average signal power to average noise power. 
so the val the best value of snr is of course infinity and the worst value is zero okay so we want the snr should be as large as possible so let us see one example here so suppose this is the signal and here we have the noise so in this case the signal power is very large and noise is very small as we can see the amplitude is very less so at the receiving side if we combine both this is what we get okay those signal is of course little bit distorted so here this is having a a, a large a snr value now in the second case this is the signal and this is the noise so here we see that noise power is very large and the signal power is very less so if we combine them then this is what we are getting so we are only getting noise we are not getting any signal so this is the worst value worst case we can say okay of snr now data rate the data rate depends uh, the, so what is the meaning of data rate limits so data rate limits actually tells how much fast we can send the data through the particular channel so it depends on three factors the first is how much bandwidth is available okay so bandwidth large bandwidth able, available we can send more data okay then the second is how many levels of signals we are using as we saw if there are two levels then we will we will be able to only send less data but if the levels are more we can send more amount of data then the quality of the channel how much whether it is noisy or noiseless so that also depends okay and that also actually judges wh what the data rate would limit would be now uh, there are two actually theorems we can say one is for noiseless channel which is called as the nyquist bit rate so that gives the maximum bit rate okay so what is a bit rate so according to nyquist formula bit rate is two times the bandwidth into log l to the base 2 so l is the number of levels of the uh, of of the signals okay then we have the shannon capacity so uh, nyquist bit rate it cannot be used because we don't have noiseless channels we only have noisy channels so this shannon capacity it gives the exact formula the highest bit rate so it gives the capacity actually so capacity is bandwidth into log 1 plus snr to the base 2 so in the previous case uh, nyquist did not take into consideration the noise so the noise is always there so we need to consider the noise so this is the this shannon capacity formula it gives the highest data rate which can be supported by the noisy channel now performance of a network it depends on the factors such as bandwidth the throughput the latency bandwidth delay product and jitter so the bandwidth so bandwidth is measured either in hertz or in bits per second so more the bandwidth more the data would be can could be sent through the channel the throughput so throughput is how much fast we can actually send data through the network okay then we have the latency which is also called as the de de delay now this delay is actually the sum of propagation time the transmission time the queuing time and the processing delay so this are this all they make up the delay so delay should be as less as possible then the jitter so jitter is the that whenever we are sending the packets suppose we are sending 1 2 3 4 the packet in sequence at the receiving side they may come out of order so this causes jitter so that's all for this particular session thanks for watching do join for the next video